In a previous video, I talked about how you could use token mod to programmatically adjust the properties of a particular token. In this video, I'm going to showcase three other scripts that you can use to more readily manipulate tokens, including how to create token actions, how to quickly set the status of a token, and how you can manipulate tokens that are on the GM layer from the token layer. Note that everything in this video will require a Roll20 Pro subscription. Alright, so let's get started, and we're going to begin by talking about a script called Token Action. I've done another video where I talk about creating token actions. These are the toolbars that get created based off of items in a character sheet. So if I open up my character sheet here, I have all these abilities here, and these are all the uh, sort of quick actions that I want to be able to do, just have my wizard be able to cast magic missile with the click of a button, and you can see up here, that's on my toolbar. So my wizard doesn't need to open his character sheet, he can just magic missile right from there. As long as his token is selected, all those things are available. And that's great, but manually going through and creating all those operations can be tedious. So the token action script creates them for you. So let's look at our little goblin that I've got right here. I'm going to go here, type in exclamation point TA for token action, and press enter. And we get a message saying that token actions have been created. We'll just click off that creature, click on it again, and now we have that toolbar. So we'll go ahead, we can attack with the short sword, we can attack with the crossbow, we've got all of his ability checks here, so if he wants to make a intimidation check, or if he wants to make a save, all those things are available right from the bar. And the nice thing about this is this works for creatures that have spells as well. So if I click on this lich right here, again, TA, click on again, and now you'll see we've got the spell button right here. And when I click that, I get this list in the chat of all the different spells that that lich can cast. And I can cast right from this list. I can just say, all right, power word kill. There we go, it's cast. Now, one thing to know about this is it doesn't decrease the amount of spells that the creature has remaining. So you would need to kind of manually track that or go into the character sheet and, and deduct it. But otherwise, all of those operations are available to you right from the toolbar. And when you are juggling a lot of creatures on the board at once, this can be really helpful and really speed up play. If you ever want to remove the token action bar, that's a simple matter of just typing in exclamation point delete TA. It will remove the token action, so when you click on it again, you notice the bar is now gone. Okay, but I'm just going to put that back. Now, the token action script is not part of the regular Roll20 script library, so I'm going to put a link to it down in the description below, and I'm going to pop a card in the upper right that shows how to install those kinds of scripts in case you've never done it before. All right, so let's move on to our next script, which is called Status Info. And let's say our, our Lich has advanced on our Cleric here, and he has used his Paralyzing Touch, and the cleric has failed his save, and now he's paralyzed. Okay, well, we want to do two things. One, we want to mark this token so that we know it's paralyzed. And then two, we want to remind that token's player what the paralyzed condition actually does from a game mechanics standpoint. So, what the status info script allows you to do is select the particular status you're interested in. This one right here is the paralyzed. Select that, and you see now the token has been marked with the icon I selected, but status info has also automatically displayed a summary of that status here in the chat. So now there's no question about what the paralyzed condition does. My player doesn't need to go look it up. They can just see it right there in the chat and know, oh boy, I'm in trouble because any attacks that are against me have advantage, and anything that's in five feet of me is going to be a crit. So the player's day is about to get significantly worse, but at least they know it. Now, the great thing about the status info script, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to clear this real quick so I can show you one other thing, is it can be used in conjunction with token mod. And so what I've done is taken a macro that was written by the status info scripts author. It's this whole long thing here. I will put this in the description below, but I'll also include a link to status info's thread up on the Roll20 forums. 
because if the author of the script makes modifications to this macro, either because of uh, new functionality that Roll20 has introduced or because of new functionality that uh, they themselves have introduced, I want you folks to be able to grab the most recent copy of that macro. But the great thing about this macro is, is I can now select a token, click status, that's the name of my, my macro, I can say, all right, I'm going to be paralyzed, submit, and it does it for me. You can see here, it, it puts it into the chat box. It sets the appropriate marker. If I want to clear that, maybe we're, we make our save, we're not paralyzed anymore, I can select clear conditions. And you can see it removes it from the item. So in order for that to work, you do need token mod installed and you need status info installed in order for that macro to be operational. And again, token mod is part of the standard script API library, so you can install it that way. And then status info, I will put a link to that down in the description below uh, because that is not part of the standard library. Okay, so we've created token actions. We've easily set our status now. Last thing I wanna talk about is how to manipulate a token that's on the GM layer from the objects layer. You know, if you've got creatures that can turn invisible, there are a handful of ways you can do that. And in fact, I've got a whole nother video that talks about ways you can handle invisible creatures. But this last script that I came across handles this in a much cleaner way. I really like it. The script itself is called Bump. And what you do here is you highlight the token that's going to be invisible, right? And then you type in exclamation point bump dash slave dash dash push and when i enter this you're going to see that the token is now been moved to the gm layer but it's got this purple aura that's been placed around it that aura is actually a separate token that's living on the token layer right now so watch this when i move the purple aura token the creature's token, which is on the GM layer, moved into that same spot. If I move it again, it's always following it. So this way, I can just manipulate this aura token, move it around. The creature moves with me. I don't need to toggle between the different layers. I'm always on the token layer. And this is awesome because now it just means I'm on one layer. I move the lich around. I move the goblin into position. And this Nertha Willem is just going to creep around behind my wizard, sneak up on him and try to eat him. When you want to move the token back to the token layer, just right click on it, say layer GM layer. And what that's going to do is swap the two tokens. And when that happens, you'll notice now that my creature is highlighted with this green aura. So when I move the creature, which is now on the token layer, that green aura follows it around. And the green aura is on the GM layer. So when you swap these, when you send the other one to the GM layer, the other one comes to the top. And that way, you're always just moving the items on the token layer and the creature just stays with you if it's on the GM layer or the aura stays with you if that's the one that's on the GM layer. Now here's where it gets even better. So right now my monster is on the GM layer and my purple aura is the one that's on the token layer. Let's say my wizard has cast something that has an area effect, right? And it's gonna do damage to this invisible creature. Well, normally what you would do is switch to the GM layer, modify the token's HP, and then switch back. But when you're using Bump, the Aura token is linked to the monster's abilities and attributes as well. So if I click on the Aura token, you see that's the one I have highlighted right now, and I adjust its HP, I'm going to reduce it by 30, it updates the creature's token as well. You can see it actually there are two health bars as I move this. It's going pretty fast here. And if I switch it, if I move this one back to the GM layer, so they, they swap, right? Now the monster has 69 HP, just like before. And I can, you know, reduce it further if I want to. There we go. And the, or the auras values have updated as well. So this way you stay on the token layer the entire time. You never need to toggle between the GM layer and the token layer. And it makes running invisible creatures so much easier. Now, if you want to remove a token so it's no longer part of bump, just have it highlighted. Type in bump dash unslave. 
and that removes the uh, slave token so you don't have the aura token following the creature around anymore. And Bump is part of the standard API library, so you can just install it straight into your games. No need to go out and grab scripts from anywhere else. So there you have it, three scripts that help make manipulating tokens a whole lot easier. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.